Christian Parenting. Are you struggling to balance your modern life and your faith? You're in the right place. Welcome to the Legacy Dads Podcast with Lance and Dante, offering biblical-based wisdom and that weekly dose of what truly works in men's lives. The Legacy Dads Podcast, real men, authentic faith. Here are your hosts of the Legacy Dads Podcast. They're authentic, transparent, and not always politically correct. Lance and Dante. Hey everyone, Dante and my partner Lance. Lance, how are you, brother? I'm doing great. I just want to welcome all of our new listeners from Christian Parenting and Christian Parenting Podcast. Uh, As we just announced on our last podcast, uh, our partnership with them and looking forward to the future. Uh, Before we begin uh, today's uh, uh, topic of Lance poking the big bear, uh, daughters and social media, getting a little bit of business out of the way here. Legacy Dads is your weekly dose of biblical manhood. This podcast is for men husbands, and fathers in all stages of life where we promote and advocate proven biblical principles for leaving a lasting legacy. I, I don't know why it's me poking the bear. Like I had a daughter too. I had to deal with this stuff. Okay. But you know, number one, <laughs> your daughter has been around the world now. Number two, yeah. she's in her second or third year of college. Yeah. And number three, she's fully capable on her own. Whereas like, I'm not even in the soup of like the dating stage. You know, I, I, <laughs> I briefly had a, a heart attack moment and all that. So, you know, you, you, we're talking about, okay, what's today's topic? And, you know, I, all of a sudden I, I see your headline of uh, daughters and social media. I'm like, oh, okay poking the bear. I see what he's doing now. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I'm trying to give you what you need for what's coming. That's that's <laughs> yeah. subliminal yeah, that's, messaging. <laughs> I'll be more gray hair tomorrow when I wake up, that's for sure. <laughs> but anyways, previously on the show, we talked about some of the evidence-based research coming out of the destructive nature of helicopter parenting mm-hmm. and coddling our children. Researchers like uh, Jean, I think I'm going to say her name right, uh, Twenge, the author of iGen, have noted the rapid rise in depression and anxiety among children born in 1996 and later thereafter. Mm -hmm. Around 2012, these numbers start to skyrocket, sometimes, and this is staggering, sometimes doubling or tripling, and not just in the United States, but also in the UK and Canada. Jonathan Haidt is a social psychologist and co-author of a number of books on increasing rates of emotional fragility, anger, and toxicity among younger generations. College campuses that used to be the proving ground for a spree, uh, excuse me, proving ground of free speech, innovation, and the exchange of innovative ideas have increasing become censored and taken on the culture that speech is violence. Ideas are dangerous and contrary opinions to the horde and points of view should be silenced and suppressed. Yeah. So Dante, I think, uh, you know, for, for us, for us old fogies, it's probably, we we want to provide some context here. So let's go back. And some of you remember this back in the early days of social media, like around 2003, 2004, um, you've got social media back then, like Friendster, MySpace. Oh, so I, really didn't, I didn't think those back. are around wow. anymore. Okay. I don't even know. Oh, wow. Did you have a MySpace? I think I might still have a MySpace account somewhere out there. Did you, I was going to say, did you have a MySpace account? <laughs> um, and and Facebook was really, so you have Facebook, but it was mainly, uh, you had to be a college student on a college campus to have access to Facebook. Um, and these were actually, it was a nice place. Social media was very tame back then. Um, it's kind of like, hey, look at me. Here's some pictures. Here's the bands that I like, what I'm listening to. Here's the links to some my, you know, my friends, you know, everybody remembers, here's what I'm eating right now at this restaurant. Look at this great, you know, meal. Um, and, and that was kind of the first few years of what social media was. There was no censorship. There was no, you know, multi-million dollar corporations coming in and, and taking over. Um, and there was no political groups spreading outrage or uh, propaganda on social media. I mean, it was not really a destructive environment back then. It wasn't toxic. It wasn't a toxic environment, you know, in any, any way. Um, so then some big changes started to happen in the kind of the mid to late 2000s. So Facebook... Uh, started to allow anyone to join. You didn't have to be a college student, um, so anybody could create an account. And then in 2009, uh, Facebook introduced the like button. And now, 
for the first time, everything and everyone can be graded and ranked. And now everybody is rewarding or punishing everyone else by simply clicking a button, whether they like or dislike you. You know, Lance, I can totally hear some of our listeners right now saying, who cares if you get a like or not? Yeah, yeah. And I wouldn't be surprised if half our listeners say, Facebook, what's that? Yeah. But because of uh, for mature adults, we are more developed and don't tie our identity to social media. Mm-hmm. But mm-hmm. this is critical because for younger adults or children, social media has now become a popularity contest. Yeah. So now speech isn't just you and me talking openly. It becomes, how do I get more likes and approval? Mm -hmm. So other platforms like Twitter come out and they introduce the retweet button. And now the things that I'm saying or that we're saying right here on this podcast that you're liking tend to be the things that are going to make people emotional or even sharing my frustration or anger. And then you or anyone can press retweet and spread that so Uh, Now my frustration and anger can go to thousands or even millions of people within a day that share or or want to have the same expression and like the way that somebody else says it. Yeah, yeah, you're correct. And I think between, you know, like 2009, 2012, kind of this is the next step when when the news media, mainstream media began to realize, hey, this social media thing is not going away and it may even overcome and overtake us. So uh, the mainstream media begins to adapt to this new world in which, you know, people now and, and they're not going to CNN, they're not going to the New York Times for their information as much. They're getting their news and their opinions from social media. And often I can tell you, but without fact checking anything, it's like, well, you know, <laughs> God bless my mom, but I don't know how many times she's like, well, I saw it on Facebook. It has to be true. And I'm it like, it must be true. It's like, yeah, yeah if you're. <laughs> A Russian spy putting it on it, you know, I'm like, come yeah. on. Um, so now, you know, we can, we can go down a rabbit hole on how social media, and it also creates echo chambers and, and confirmation bias, because one of the things that Facebook switched over to, it used to be that you would get everybody, you know, get all this information. Um, and it was kind of random. Well, Facebook started optimizing that to where they're only going to show you social media is only going to show you the stuff that they think you want to hear and like. Um, so this changed and became more of an engagement focused thing. Um, so now you get this confirmation bias because now we can only, we can choose to just watch and listen to the point of views that we agree with. Um, and, and, you know, let's get, you know, I, you know, so that, that's a whole rabbit hole we could go down. I don't want to do that. You can go back and listen to some of our podcasts. We talk about that, but let's get to what this means for parents and specifically for parents uh, of daughters. So, uh, Dante, this, you know, this will probably relate to a lot of our guys out there. So in the development process, boys, uh, you know, our, our maturity, our hierarchy or, or the, you know, the alpha male is kind of based on, you know, things like our athletic ability, our toughness, our ability to dominate or insult can, you know, competition, teasing, you know, drinking soda through your nose with a straw. Uh, those are the things, you know, like middle school boys are, uh, that's important to them, things like that. Now, I'm not I'm not endorsing this behavior, agreeing with this, saying that, you know, is what this type of behavior is. I mean, just that's just what it is. It's a scientific fact that this is kind of how middle school and high school boys move through their child development process. Um, you know, we could argue that, you know, I, I'm, I would argue this, Dante, that uh, some boys never develop out of this stage. And we have 30 and 40 year olds who are still clinging to this, you know, alpha male. I'm the toughest. I, I can dominate and insult you model. Um but that's don't that's, stop there. Maybe fifty year olds yeah, too. <laughs> yeah, that's neither here nor there. Um, <laughs> but but for girls and for our daughters, this is specifically different. It's about who's in, who's out, who is included, who is excluded, who's that's friends so with who, who knows whose secrets. Um, and so the you know when female aggression tends to be not physical like boys, like they're not going to wrestle and fight. It's relational and it's a lot of drama. Um, girls don't bully each other, you know, generally girls don't bully the, each other physically so much. Um, but what girls do is they gossip and they damage each other's relationships. And again, we could argue that there are grown women, even in our churches that still cling to this model. Now, again, I'm not endorsing anything, I'm not saying that this is, you know, we, we agree with this behavior. I'm just, I'm just regurgitating medical science and facts. This is kind of the development process. So, uh, around 2008, 2009, this is when we start seeing smartphones coming out. The iPhone first comes out and now you have social media 
is in your hand and in your pocket at all times. Okay. So with girls and daughters, this multiply, this multiplies a girl's ability to be able to damage each other's relationships enormously. So in some homes and in some cases, uh, children and girls, they have access 24 seven to this device in which their thoughts, emotions, and images can be report, can be rewarded or punished by anyone clicking a button. And so if you had a fight with a girl that day in school, she can get on there and spread nasty things about you. And, you know, everybody's uh, not liking you or making fun of you via uh, anonymous social media on a phone. And while adults, you know, as adults, we might shrug these things off and say, what's the big deal? I mean, who cares? But you got to remember girls in this vulnerable stage in development, middle school, high school, they're looking for approval. They're looking for inclusion and they're being, they're looking to, you know, being seen as beautiful as much. Um, and they're much more susceptible, um, to anxiety, depression, self-harm, and even suicide due to this, you know, approval, inclusion, and comparison that they're dealing with. Does that make sense, Dante? Yeah. I mean, Lance, what you're saying, the evidence for this is not just correlational. Five experiments have randomly done on cutting back social media use, and all five experiments found beneficial outcomes to limited social media use. I want to repeat that for our listeners. All five experiments found beneficial outcomes to limited social media use. I think that applies, that applies to everybody, not just uh, oh, kids. And especially <laughs> today. I mean, you know, if I can hear anything, Dante, repeat that to yourself every day this week. Um, why this affects girls more than boys is that girls use social media more than boys and tie emotions to social media. Yeah. Girls post many more photos on social media yeah. and the photos are different. Boys post photos typically focusing on doing something like playing sports, you know, some stupid thing or some working out at the gym. Yeah, you know, yeah, might you know, might you know, just make people laugh. Girls are more likely to post a photo where the emphasis is on how the girl looks. Yeah, if people don't like a boy's photo of the football game, the boy doesn't care. But if people don't like a girl's selfie at the same football game, girls are much more likely to take that personally, take that destructively, and even scaringly more so is take that to heart. Yeah. Yeah, you're correct, Dante. And um, so I asked, you know, my 20-year-old daughter and I, uh, before she went back to school a couple of weeks ago, we were uh, we watched this interview with um, – uh, a Gen X girl named Gabrielle Reese. She's a accomplished athlete. Um, I want to say she was a pre- professional volleyball player or something like that. Um, she's got her own health line now, and she's the wife of a very famous surfer named uh, Laird Hamilton. If you, you know, surfers out there, you probably know who he is. He's a legend. Um, but they both live in Hawaii now. And um, she was doing this interview explaining that when you know, our, uh, you know, the younger generation, I'll say Gen X or uh, when we were growing up and they were growing up as girls, you know, she was taught that girls were taught, okay, go to college, get an education, you know, come up with great ideas and be the change you, that you want to see in the world. So it was more about, you know, is empowering women, uh, with education and thought and substance to be, you know, a strong, positive woman that that's kind of what, you know, her generation, uh, was taught. Now, um, there were some, I mean, there are girls, there's obviously women and girls and men, uh, who are going to use their sexuality to their advantage. But for the most part, that was kind of frowned upon, um, you know, and, and it's kind of like, you know, that, that girl that's sleeping around to get ahead in her career, what that was kind of not necessarily a, a positive thing. Um, but now today you can be an 18 year old Instagram model and forgive me listeners if this kind of offends you, but this is real, this actual person, 18 year old Instagram model that literally just posts pictures of her butt every day and you'll get millions of followers and you will get millions of likes and approvals and you will get advertising deals for thousands of dollars and you can make tons of money for weaponizing your sexuality. And the sad part is that now what we're seeing culture, Hollywood, um, you know, the music industry, they're, they're all just approving this behavior and saying, yeah, you girl, you get what you can and you go out, yeah, shake your thing and make your money, you know? And, and so the world and our culture is basically approving of this behavior. Um, and in this interview, Gabrielle Reese is saying, you know, 
as a parent, she's got a, she's daughters of her own. She's like, how do I, as a parent compete with that and tell our daughters that taking pics of your butt for money is probably not the best option. Um, you know, so it's, it's really, as a parent, it's up, I mean, and, and, you know, we can argue there's tons of ways to do that and raise how we raise our kids. Um, but you know, my daughter, as we're watching this, she says, she told me, she's like, yeah, you know, dad, um, there's this new social media site called only fans and they'll pay you pay girls on average two to $300 just for a picture. And it's, you don't have, it's not a naked picture. It's just, you know, you doing a sexy pose. Or she even said she had somebody say, I will give you $300 if you just send me a picture of your feet. And, you know, whatever you take that, that's, you know, crazy weirdos out there. Um, But that's what this is. This is actually a new onboarding site, social media site for the pornography industry, adult entertainment. And I'm I'm assuming potentially human trafficking because all that stuff goes together. So as parents, we need to understand this social media. This is serious stuff. And I think, you know, we need to take action to minimize this damage. So there's a little bit of good news um, in this. I know some of this sounds very, you know, maybe be shocking. And especially if you've got younger, uh, younger kids or younger daughters, you're not there yet. Um, uh, you know, this, this might be a little bit uh, shocking to you, but there is some good news. And this is where the, I think you guys can really uh, learn from this. So if we can keep our daughters off of social media until high school, uh, the research shows from, I know Jonathan Haidt uh, looked at some research and he mentioned this too. The research shows that girls that don't get on social media until they're like 16 or 17 years old, they, they have much lower rates of depression, anxiety, and self-harm because I guess the idea is at that point, they've matured a little bit more, they're a little bit older, um, and they realize then that social media is fake and it's not in a representation of reality. But for for some reason, when they're younger and they get, they, they're not able to discern that yet. But if we can keep our kids and specifically our daughters off of the social media until they hit about the 16, 17 year old, the rates go way down and the dangers go way down. Um, and, and I would even say it, to keep them off of it as long as you can. Um, but I know it's hard these days. Um, I listened to one dad saying that, you know, 10 year olds, every single 10 year old in his class had a phone and his kid was begging me, you know, begging him for a phone. Um, and, and he's like, I, I don't want to do it. I don't want to do it. Um, and there's actually schools and organizations now they're coming out and they're trying to get parents to say, do not buy your kid a phone. Like we're going to, we're going to get together as a, as a school, as a class, as a community and say, we're not getting our kids. We're not going to give them, uh, phones or, or at least smartphones with access to social media until they're older and in high school. Uh, you know, maybe you get them the, you know, the, the, I don't know if they even still make those, the little phone that's got like, you can call phone, three yeah. people, you can yeah. call nine one one mom and dad mom, or grandma, yeah. grandpa, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know, but it, that's, you know, that's fine. But they're saying, keep them off the social media until they get older. Does that, does that make sense? Sante? Absolutely. You know, parents who are listening to this podcast, you know, grandparents, uh, anyone that is taking care of raising young kids, um, we urge we urge you to follow a few simple rules. That is two hours a day of screen time, not counting homework and or research that they have to do or mandatory computer, but two hours just of screen time Mm -hmm. and no social media until high school and lots of free play outside, you know, development games, board games, you know, things that really teach your kids about money, about stewardship, about life. I mean, a simple game, you know, Monopoly can yep. teach your kids really good at economics and yep. get them off of social media on a limited basis. Let your kids, you know, out, you know, encourage them to go meet neighbors, play, especially by the age of seven or eight. Let them out to have unsupervised time with other kids in a place that's physically safe, you know, so obviously, you know, don't, you know, live by a busy street street or a high traffic area, you want to put in some parameters, but you know, where you, you have trusted environments, good neighbors, you know, stuff where parents are looking out for parents, you know, let them go out and just, you know, get a little bit of independence on that. You know, these simple steps will drastically reduce many of the harmful effects of social media. I mean, you can, you can Google, you can look at studies, you can hear what we've just said here, but I mean, um, yeah, social media, Instagram, Facebook, Snapchat, YouTube, Twitter, TikTok. TikTok is innocent and and probably a lot of parents that are listening to this, oh, what's the harm, you know, and all that. Lance, you know, from his background will tell you um, 
a lot of bad things about TikTok, but one of the really bad things that is not being noted is that it is highly used for child trafficking. Yeah. And, and you know, we think about how innocent things are or not my kid. You know, you can look at many different videos where parents have, you know, seen the results of what could happen in, in people that were either ex cops or detectives that are just showing simple exam you know, examples, you know, where little clues that their kids don't even realize they're giving away, these detectives or these police will show up with their parents in the back of the van while these these adults that are like, you know, uh, trying to meet their kids are giving away the high school, giving away the school, giving away the neighborhood, giving away the sports team that they're working on and not realizing how much of a victim you're setting your child up to be the victim. And so, you know, look, do the due diligence. You know, if you think that your child has a TikTok because everybody else is doing it, don't be sheep. Wolves eat sheep. Yeah. And, and so, you know, in my house, you know, I have a 15 year old. She doesn't have social media accounts. She doesn't have uh, Instagram. She doesn't have Facebook. She doesn't have any of the above Snapchat, anything else like that. Begrudgingly, you know, they, they've let their protests be known. But, you know, as they get a little bit older, I think our, our this son is now. so unfair, dad. Yeah, so unfair. You suck, you know. And, <laughs> and, you know, look, if your kids don't like you at least 50% of the time, you're doing a great job as a parent. <laughs> Keep going. Yeah. But, all that being said, you know, my daughter doesn't have that. My youngest daughter doesn't have that. I will tell you, um, Facebook finally got smart. And, you know, for especially like my, my youngest doesn't have a phone. She has a phone when she, uh, she has a, a, a kid's phone, you know, that she realizes now is hers because the other two have their phones. But she has it for babysitting. And if she's going to be at a sporting event or out with friends going to the mall or shopping, she has a phone to call us or overnight for emergency purposes only. Yep. But they, they don't have the social media. But the one thing that my youngest daughter does have, my middle doesn't need it because she's got texting, but is Facebook. Um, uh, messenger or FaceTime yeah. and they have it, they have it for kids. And the really cool thing about this is number one, you set it up, you're the one that approves the friends. So your closed network of who her best friends are yep, yep. and then their parents can opt in too if they want to see that. You can weekly see who they're talking to, what they're talking about. And so in a control basis, not micromanaging, not a helicopter, just look, I want to protect my daughter's innocence. I want to protect them from being a victim. I want to keep the predators away. And, you know, if they don't like a Glock, um, you know, because I can't get that through to them on Facebook or on Snapchat or on TikTok, but if they try to come near my daughter on, on that, they can meet Mr. Glock. But all that being said is, you know, I'm trying to protect their innocence for as long as I can, not shielding them from the world. Like Lance said, you know, like we're saying, get them out, socialize them, let them go out and actually get some critical thinking ability and, and to, to really enhance that critical thinking ability. The, the, it's the, the essence of turning their brain off from the electronics and getting into physical things, you know, outdoor um, friendship, you know, face to face, so much more advantageous, so much more important in how we deal with people, because it's easy to sit in the basement and pontificate and spew hatred and just non facts like we're seeing in this wicked world, you know, that's broken because it, it's a broken world. But the reality of it is when you're, when you give your kids the development of being in front of each other, you know, seeing how others react, getting in the critical thinking of, you know, like we're saying in this is at 16 and 17, when they're in the age to realize that this is not important stuff, this doesn't define me, that they're mature enough that they can handle this stuff. And you're handling them the baton of, OK, you, you raised to be you're, you've been raised to be, you know, um, self-supporting, to be confident, to you know trust God and all that you do. And now that you're, you're showing me that you have this independence, you're showing me that you have the ability, the keys of the kingdom are unlocked. Go. You know, here's the keys to the car. You know, you know the rules, you know the 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 other things that you have. So if you want this social media account, you're an adult. I trust you. And there's a passing of the baton, but until they're able to not internalize, especially your daughters, you know, guys, dads, if you're listening to this, one thing I've always told my mom or not my mom, my dad, my wife, I feel like I'm a presidential candidate right now. My wife is that, um, that was a nice tag. You like that one? But my, um, my, uh, my wife is, you know, no matter what I do in life, no matter how busy I get Lance, 
you know, if my daughter is looking for my attention, throw a brick at my head if I miss the opportunity. Yeah, and the yeah. reality of it is I want my life. I want my lap. I want my hugs. I want my kisses. I want, you know, if they want to play a card game, I don't care if I've got like a work deadline. I'm taking a half hour and playing a card game and I'm going to get that deadline for work done. But that's how important my little girls are to me. And and parents, if that, if you, if you want to mirror that and say, that's how important my daughters are to me, my kids are protect them, protect them, curb their enthusiasm as far as getting into things that will hurt them. Yeah. And I would say this, I'll give you a couple of tips and pointers that, uh, that I gave my kids, um, and, and some feedback that I got from my daughter too, as well. So, you know, we, we let our kids, um, our kids got Facebook a little bit early because we had to, we ended up, we move around a lot and for my, my, my job. And so our kids wanted ways to be able to stay in touch with old friends and things like that. And I mean, this may, most kids, a lot of the kids these days aren't even on Facebook anymore, but this this is back, you know, 10 years ago when kids were still on, a lot of them are on Facebook. But what we did is we said, okay, you can have a Facebook account. And then their first 50 friends was grandma, grandma, you know, aunt and uncle, and then a bunch of our friends who we knew would help moderate uh, anything they were doing on their accounts. So, you know, that was back before. I love what you said, Dante, about this. You know, Facebook has kind of set this thing up for kids now. Uh, what we did back before they had that was, okay, we're going to we're gonna put a bunch of trusted friends on, you know, so they're watching what our kids are doing and they can, you know, bring it to our attention if something, you know, is, is going on that shouldn't be. Um, one of the things my daughter uh, brought up to me and uh, she said, you know, the the hard thing about Instagram, especially for girls, is, is that, um, you know, and, and I said, you know, we struggle with this. I mean, if you ask our wives, I think our wives can relate and say that, you know, back in our wives day, it was the uh, uh, modeling magazines, you know, whatever the uh, what are the I can't even think of the names of them now. Um, but, you know, uh, all. 17 and 17, all that. Yeah, other 17. Stuff. I mean, yeah. so you had, and, and it was all these, you know, and, and everybody knows it's all photoshopped and, um, you know, so it's, it's these girls and, and women that have these unrealistic expectations of what beauty is supposed to be like. And then, uh, you know, our wives or the women that back then were comparing yourselves to a magazine cover. But now one of the things with social media, what my daughter is telling me is that, you have those same apps on your phone now. So your best friend, she can take a picture of herself and she can Photoshop everything and, you know, make her lips plump. And uh, they have these apps that'll do all this. And now it's not, you know, you're not comparing yourself to, well, that, uh, that girl's a model. Now it's like, why does my best friend look amazing? And I don't. Um, but my daughter said, you know, a lot of the girls are getting, they, they understand this now. And, you know, my daughter said when she got into high school, she started realizing like this, it actually, I, I, I really love, uh, I want to give girls out there, um, you know, some, and some credit and empowerment because a lot of the girls came out and said, Hey, stop filtering yourself, stop Photoshopping yourself. This is not, um, you know, this is not empowering to women and this is, this is fake. And so there's actually a lot of, uh, young ladies that have said, we're not going to do this, uh, because this is demeaning to us and just be, uh, confident with who you are, post your natural pics. You don't need to Photoshop yourselves and, and come up with this, you know, fake, uh, fake looking photos. So, um, but, but those are the things out there. It's, it'd be easy to compare yourself. And, and now it's not, like I said, you're not comparing yourself to some model on a magazine cover, like in our generation, it's, well, that girl in my class, you know, looks like a model, but really it's, it's artificial. Um, and so I think it's just reminding of that. And then and some of the other things that my daughter, and, and these were some, I'll give you some tips. And this is just stuff that uh, I did with my kids. Once they got older, I always told them, I said, you're never allowed to post things in real time. Um, and here's why. And, and if you don't know this, uh, so whenever you post a, f a picture on social media, there's metadata, there's tracking data in there that a lot of times it'll have your, the GPS coordinates of where that picture was taken. And regardless of whether you, uh, you know, like I could, I can download a photo from uh, Instagram or Facebook and I can pull out that data and I can tell you, this is where the picture was taken. This was the time it was taken. This is the camera it was taken on. So, you know, just for safety and security, I always told my kids, Never post, you know, pictures in real time. Telling somebody, "Hey, we're at the mall right now doing this or whatever," um, that's just dangerous. 
Um, because now you're telling anybody that has access to that, uh, that social media where they are at any given time right now. So I told them no tagging, uh, no posting things in real time. If you want to post pictures, wait till later on in the day or wait till the next day and then post those pictures. And, and when my daughter, now my daughter's been traveling overseas, I told her, I said, okay, take all the pictures you want and you're not going to post any till you get back to the U S. Um, yep. you know, yep. uh, stuff, yeah, stuff like that is just is safety. You don't want people knowing, you know, where you're at at any given time. Um, so some of those things are, are really important. And then one of the things my daughter shared with me was, uh, the ways in which they'll entice you is so, you know, uh, a girl will post up a picture on social media and what they'll do is somebody will comment or they'll send them a private message and say, Hey, I, I want to collab or collaborate with you. Um, and they'll say like, Hey, you know, we're, uh, uh, whatever we're selling jewelry, we're selling, uh, uh, bikinis, we're selling whatever, you know, free clothing. And what we want to do is we'll give you some free stuff. If you'll, uh, wear our stuff and then take pictures of yourself, um, you know, wearing these things. And, and so, but that's what they'll do is they'll reach out and kind of entice these girls saying, Hey, we're going to give you free stuff, free clothes, free jewelry, whatever. Um, and that's kind of a way of onboard. Now I, there may be legit companies that, that do do this. I, 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 you know, I'm not saying that everybody that does this is a sexual predator, but you want to be careful of that. And I've always, you know, my daughter told me this. she said, you just have to be careful and you have to look at when, you know, people are, um, uh, tagging them or sending them messages saying they want to give you something for free. There's always a catch there and you need to look at that. Um, the, the other thing too, again, is obviously I told my kids that, uh, if you post something on the internet, it is there forever. Um, even if you delete it, even if you try to take it down, um, we know that, you know, that stuff can live on the internet for eternity. So you have to really be careful. You have to think about, you know, something you post when you're 17, 18 years old could come back to haunt you when you're 30 or 35 or 40. And so you really want to be careful about that. And so I, you know, I stressed to both my kids, I said, do not post anything on social media that you're not going to be proud of five, 10 years down the road. Um, because that stuff may, may come back and, and haunt you somewhere down the road. And, you know, specifically with my daughter, my daughter was smart enough. My wife and I both talked to her about this, but we said, you never, ever share pictures with somebody, private pictures, uh, with any boyfriend, with anybody like that. Um, it's very common these days that guys will want, you know, um, uh, pictures of, of, of our daughters. And, you know, what you were saying, Dante, it's, it's, I think if you have a healthy relationship, if you have a nurturing and a secure home, um, you don't see this as much, but it's those, you know, homes where maybe the daughter is not getting enough attention from dad or they're in a vulnerable state that, um, these, these girls are a little bit more susceptible to that. So we do need to be careful and watch out for that. So that's just a couple of tips that I've learned. Um, and some things that my daughter shared with me just to be, you know, as, as the listeners, you can, um, you can take that warning and, and make sure you do that. Definitely go in there and, you know, look on your kids' phones and take off if they've got the, uh, the tagging or the GPS and stuff turned on, turn all that stuff off on the phone. But even if it's turned off on the phone, the picture itself, uh, picture itself still has that data on there. So you just need to be careful uh, about what they're posting and when they're posting it. Um, Dante, any, any last comments? I mean, do you got, what, what are some rules? I know you talked a little bit, what are some rules and stuff that you guys have in your house as far as social media goes? Yeah. Uh, the, uh, the limited ability, um, you know, obviously you control texting. Um, they're not allowed to have phones in their rooms past 10. Um, you know, if they're going to be on their phones or media, uh, you know, the door needs to be unlocked. Um, the ability that mom or dad may come in is there. Um, so obviously you take away or you curb the idea of, um, you know, what is appropriate or inappropriate. And, you know, the other thing too is that they may or may not know or think through software that mom and dad have. Um, but we randomly will check and just to make sure, you know, like what friends are texting or who's texting and, you know, not just looking at phone bills, but really just guiding and, and a lot of it parents talking about just spy kind of, software that you have. Yeah. <laughs> and it, we won't talk about that here on this, on this because my kids listen to this podcast. <laughs> but, um, but the other thing too is, you know, limiting their, their minds and protecting them. You know, if, if somebody without, you know, your dad, you think about walking your little, you know, princess down, you know, the aisle and giving her hand away to another guy and to know that, you know, some predator is out there or somebody there is going to take away their innocence or to your child, 
child and and you 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 know I, I'm just giving you the the most damaging image that I can and you know saying Dante how can you be so morbid and the reality of it is it would be great it, you know if everybody lived by you know the the commandments of God and everybody you know obeyed exactly what God says to do but we know unfortunately evil um, unchallenged prevails and you know where there's light there's no darkness but where we don't shine the light and a lot of times and is in these things in social media um, or or media uh, uh, programs that we have out there is to realize that there are are predators, there is evil, and there are people that intend to do harm, and that may be a group of girls that, you know, are just terrorizing a child, and, you know, maybe not that your child is a part of that, maybe they're just abstaining, but, you know, not saying something is also just as damaging to the other child that is the victim, and so I just, you know, be on guard, you know, limited social time, and the other thing, too, is, you know, as the older they get, and, you know, that impact becomes more you know, this is part of the negotiation change too, is, you know, if we see disrespect and I, I can definitely tell when they're like, you know, full bore on uh, YouTube or on Netflix or with, you know, media, because you can just see. And when they get back into the element of with the family and with friends and get together. So limiting that time really changes how they interact with each other, too. And I, I can tell you, I, I don't know about your family, but my family, there's definitely a positive correlation between how they respond and being over stimulated by too much media. Yeah. And so you're, you're protecting your child's brain. You're protecting the sanctity and the and the sanity of your family. And so, you know, the Instagram and the other stuff is not an option for my kids until they're driving. And, you know, that a lot of it depends on their, their, you know, their maturity as far as, you know, where they're at, you know, with their walk with God, where they're at with, you know, with their friends and the choices of friends. And, um, and a lot of that, you know, dictates what they can have as far as freedom um, and privileges. But, you know, they, they're, they're under the understanding and the guys, the phone is a privilege. The yep. smartphone is a privilege. Yep. And this is something that you're not entitled to. You don't get automatically just because it's a privilege. And as long as you treat that as a privilege, you know, and, and you act accordingly with that, you know, in a healthy way. And I'm not, you know, sitting there saying it's a rules, whatever, but it's also a, a negotiation tool as far as you want you uh, your independence. You want to go um, show me where you're at, you know, with how you treat your sisters, how you treat your brother. Show me at with how you respect your mom or your dad and your neighbors and your friends. And, you know, a lot of that we can see it, you know, the friends that they choose, you know, what circles they walk in. And, you know, the more that I know that I see them well-rounded, um, responding to others healthy, then, you know, then you give them a little bit more autonomy. And, and that's the whole purpose of what we're doing. You know, it's our our role as spiritual leaders of parents is to teach them and raise them in the fear and admonition of the Lord Jesus Christ and to pray that they have a relationship with him, but also teaching them how to be good citizens, teaching them, you know, uh, what it means to earn, you know, uh, a living here in this country, what it means to be a, a really good citizen, you know, not only of heaven, but, you know, of, of the municipality of, of the, the country that you're in. And part of that is giving back and using your resources you know, in a, an appropriate way. And some of these things, let's be honest, they're just mind suckers. They're numbing. They have no positive productivity, except in the example, like you gave Lance, where, you know, you're, you're moving constantly, your career is taking you all over the place, you know, stuff like that. That's using discernment and that's saying, okay, this is a way for them to keep it, but also in closing the circle that we know that we can trust to protect them. And so these are little things, you know, if you're listening to this, your husband and wife, you know, maybe now is, you know, not to just, we got to do it this way, but to sit down and say, hey, where are we doing this right? Where are we doing it wrong? You know, if you got questions, reach out to Lance, who has done, uh, when I say research on it, I mean, this guy is a digger. This guy is a researcher. He will give you any venue that you need to go to uh, go to that rabbit hole that you want. <laughs> you want a general summary too. But a lot of the things that we do it, it, with my family is a lot of results from, you know, the, the conversations with Lance and with Jen and, and, you know, he's gone before me and like, he, you know, he doesn't say you got to do it this way, but he's telling me what works. And, and some of these things, seeing how his two kids have turned out, I'm telling you it works and it's proven. And I can see it with my kids. So protect them. You know, for me, the absolute knows right now before, you know, 16 or the maturity level of their age is no, you know, TikTok, 
no uh, Facebook, no, and even Facebook has a rule. I think it's 18. And then you read about parents that give their kids at 11 or 10. Uh, you know, as a Christian, I kind of like, huh? But, you know, all that being said is there's a reason why even some of these social media giants have stipulation because they also realize that there's predators out there and that they could be liable if they allow accounts that are not above the minimum age. So, yeah, yeah, you know, you know one, one of the things too, the statistics, and I remember Jonathan Haidt saying this, if you look at some of the, some of the CEOs and the people that have developed these social media apps, they don't allow, they don't their, do they don't allow their own kids on them. So no, that should that, sh- that should be very telling if Zuckerberg, I mean, I don't think Zuckerberg ha- he doesn't have older kids yet, but I know some of the other ones, people that worked at Facebook, people that work at Apple and stuff, they don't let their kids have the very technology they're creating. That should be kind of telling of the addictiveness and the, and the dangers you want to look out for. So, you know, I would, I would say that, uh, you know, watch out for that. Last thing too, you made me think of something here, Dante. There is, I know a lot of, uh, phone, um, plans, will allow you to go in and uh, there's a parenting feature where you can shut off phones at times. And I know we did that with our kids where it was like nine o'clock, all the phones are shut off. They can't use the phones. They can't use the apps or anything. It's basically a, a wait. Um, so you can set that up. And then what I would even recommend too, is you just get the phones out of the room and you say, Hey, at night, the phone, whatever, we got a charging station in the kitchen. That's where the phone goes when it's time for bed. Um, or at, you know, whatever time. That, yeah. Yeah, whatever time you're saying about, but we did that to make sure, you know, the kids weren't messing around on the phones or, or trying to look at their phones at 10 o'clock at night or whatever. Um, so just either get the phones out of the room or, you know, like we did too, go in there and you can shut off so they can't use the phones during certain, certain hours that you as a parent Oh, that's decide. a fun one. I, I've done that too before. When we, oh yeah. That, you want to talk about rule. unfair and what, why is my phone not working? I'm like, well. And how you get attention really quick. Yeah. That's one way to do it. <laughs> Oh man. Yeah. It's like, well, I could take it away. You want me to do that? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So, um, guys, as always, we want to invite you guys, if this was helpful to you guys, or if you guys have more questions, um, again, there's certain stuff I can't share, uh, because of my job on the public here, but if you want to go into the private Facebook group, I might share a little bit more, but it is Facebook. So I'm not going to share stuff in there as well, but I'll, I'll point you in the right direction. I'll tell you that. Uh, if you got, we would invite you guys to go join that community on, on the private Facebook group. You can go over to legacydads.org and get the link, uh, or just go to Facebook and search uh, legacy dads and you'll be able to find in our, our private group there. Um, but we can go in there and we can talk a little bit more in depth about some of this or share with us some of the things you've done, uh, successes, failures, kids protesting, you know, um, we would love to hear those and, and, uh, uh, it, I think it when we have these conversations with other parents, it really uh, provides value. And I think that's something that uh, we can all learn together when we're doing that. So we invite you guys to go join the community over there and uh, and tell us what you think about this. Um, so with that, again, we want to say welcome to all our Christian parenting uh, friends coming over. We really are excited about this partnership, having you guys on board. Uh, thank you guys so much. Uh, you can head over and subscribe. Make sure, like we said, sign up for that email so you're getting all the updates and the free stuff. Yeah, where do they go for that, Lance? By the way, tell everybody on Christian Parenting. Uh, yeah, so you can go to go to the christianparenting.org website and you can sign up for the emails there. Um, and then also you can go to our, on um, once you go over to Christian Parenting, there's a Legacy Dads page where you can go in and sign up for the emails on there as well and you'll get Legacy Dad specific stuff. Or you can head over to our page, legacydads.org, and probably the first thing you're going to see uh, when the page pops up is a little thing that says, Hey, sign up for your email. We probably, we, we, uh, we don't even send it. I mean, we don't send stuff out. We're not going to spam you. We're not going to be sending you, you know, 20 emails a week. Uh, I don't think we've sent out an email in years. So, uh, <laughs> but we will. No. We're, we're so gonna, if you get an email, it will be big. It'll be big. Something. It's like, Jesus is coming back. We got <laughs> firsthand knowledge. Amen. Uh, Amen. Yeah. So uh, believe me, we're not going to spam you guys. Uh, so go ahead and sign up there, but you will get updates from us. You can do that. And then as always, guys, we want to say we thank you guys so much for your support. We thank all of the new listeners and all of our veteran uh, listeners that have been with us. We really appreciate you guys. Um, we will say that uh, let us know again, too, on uh, if you want to hear uh, future podcasts, things that you want to, uh, topics or things that you're struggling with. We would love to hear that and your feedback. We also want to hear testimonies from you guys. You know, what's working for you? What isn't? If you've taken something that we've said and you've applied it and it's worked or, or even it didn't work, uh, we would love to hear that feedback. So please give that to us and we can, uh, we can put that up on the show here. Uh, for everybody to help uh, to be able to learn together as you said so 
But that guy's is always going to say, we love you guys. We are praying for you guys. Have a great week. We'll see you next time. Take care and God bless. God bless. Thanks so much for listening to this episode of the Legacy Dads Podcast with Lance and Dante, real men, authentic faith. For more great content and to stay up to date, visit LegacyDads.org and on Facebook.com slash Legacy Dads and on Twitter at Legacy underscore Dad. If you enjoyed today's episode, please review and subscribe and we'll catch you next time on the Legacy Dads Podcast. Real men, authentic faith.